the Deacon, otherwise known by its catalogue title of the Proto-Xenomorph XX033, and colloquially known as the Protomorph, is the fourth stage of the endoparasitic species Plagiarus noxipata. Whilst being unique and unusual life form, the Protomorph does appear have something in common with, or possibly maybe be an early step in the evolutionary chain of even more complex Plagiarus species relatives across the middle heavens, such as the infamous Xenomorph XX121, colloquially known simply as the Alien. So in today's data log, I want to break the species Plagiarus noxipata down and explain everything we know so far about this little encountered and understood beast. The Deacon or Protomorph at birth shares a passing resemblance to its XX121 cousins, emerging from its host with arms and legs fully developed. The Deacon shares a semi-matured gestational emergence with the likes of the Predomorph chestburster and Neomorph bloodburster. However, besides the few commonalities the many Xeno creatures possess, there are a number of characteristics that help to set them apart. The protomorph instead of a mesoskeleton appears to have a smooth fleshy blue and black hued flesh exterior to its body, appearing absence of any biomechanical features or dorsal stacks. The protomorph also has an exceptional mouth. The creature possesses one main row of human-like teeth, with a secondary upper set of fang-like teeth attached to an extendable interior jaw, which is seemingly able to detach from and protrude out from the creature's mouth the use of which is seemingly an offensive weapon but could also assist in the creature's digestion of captured prey. Researchers have likened this trait to that of the earthbound species of Mitsukurina ostoni, or the goblin shark. Its legs follow a plantigrade structure and the creature has a pentadactyl limb comprised of four fingers and a thumb. One of the most differential traits of the protomorph when compared to the xenomorph XX121 is that the beast lacks a tail of any kind and its head instead of shaping into a large dome forms into a sharp point, a trait that assists the creature birthing itself from its host organism. The shape of the creature's head is reminiscent of a bishop or deacon's cowl, leading to its unconventional nickname. The protomorph has bony protrusions that extend from their fingers that form talon-like claws used for slashing and ripping apart prey. The Deacon shows the same abilities to resist numerous extreme environments such as the vacuum of space or those drowned in radiation. A protozenomorph's blood is only mildly caustic, but not acidic enough to cause severe damage. Due to the extremely rapid development period of the Deacon, the host organism it gestates from is killed well before the birth. This occurs due to the fact that its rapid gestational process consumes the host's biomass very aggressively, literally eating away at their organs, bones and other various tissues. Aside from these few tidbits, we know very little else about the creature's morphology and biology. Researchers are yet to have a chance to study these rare specimens, so further information on the infant, like any current knowledge of the adult form of the protomorph is yet to be procured. However, it's likely a safe bet to say that these creatures would substantially grow in size as it matures. Little is known about the creature's overall intelligence, but like its xenomorph cousins the protomorph displays a heightened level of aggression towards all opposing species. Their primary drive, similar to other xenotype species like it, appears to be the eradication of all other forms of non-botanic life. From the few studies we have of these beasts, we have seen a very driven yet single-minded focus on their desire to act on simple instinct. The Deacon's creatures that came to inhabit Erebo's station in 2185 were influenced and seemingly responded to the empathic commands of the Fulframan, the mutated superspecies of humans that we plan to cover in a future data log. This empathic influence could mean that the Deacons, like their Xenomorph XX121 cousins, have some kind of telepathic hive mind for communication. However, this is yet to be confirmed and further study is required. How specifically and where this species originates from is currently little understood. It's most likely that this species is a natural and likely possible outcome of human infection by varying types of the engineer's genetic accelerant and its molecular interactions with Homo sapiens DNA. This is due to the fact that both times the protomorph has been encountered in two completely isolated events and under wildly different circumstances. Some have suggested that the protomorph is a progenitor to the xenomorph XX121. However, we at the project believe this to not be the case, as is seen on LV223 a mural dating back at least a couple thousand years depicts a creature with similarities to the classic xenomorph, neomorph and lesser so the deacon as well. This creature in the mural is likely not a deacon as the facehugger creatures also depicted differ greatly from the trilobite in the deacon's life cycle. It is much more likely that the deacon is a common possible result of the engineer's genetic accelerant interacting with the shared human and engineered genome. Much like how the Neomorph is also a creature that commonly and naturally results from ecosystems infected by the engineer's accelerant. 
The true life cycle path of this species is yet to be determined, so it will be easier to recount each one separately before attempting to even theorize the potential natural life cycle of these beasts. The first of which, currently under designation Proto Xenomorph XX033, was first seen generated on the moon of LV223 through a number of seemingly chance conditions. The synthetic David 8, a part of the Prometheus expedition in 2093, would recover samples of the engineer's genetic accelerant and opted to test it on another member of the expedition, one Dr. Charlie Holloway. David 8 spiked a cold beverage of Dr. Holloway's with a drop of the accelerant. After consuming the drink, Dr. Holloway would begin a round of genetic mutations. While eventually transforming Holloway into an anathema, it also would mutate any bacteria or parasitic life forms within his body into worm-like life forms. Holloway was unaware of his infection, and so after his drink, he slept with Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, inadvertently infecting her with at least a single one of the worms. The creature whilst in her womb would develop and grow at an alarming rate into a large squid-like creature, reaching the size of a three-month-old human fetus within her uterus within a few hours. Eventually, Shaw would seek the use of the ship's med pod to conduct a surgery to remove the creature. The removal is successful, and the third stage of the protomorph's life cycle would enter the world. Following its removal, Shaw activated a decontamination in the med pod to kill the creatures. However, it's only later that she would come to realize that the beast had simply been momentarily incapacitated. Upon later returning to the now crashed USCSS Prometheus lifeboat containing the med pod used by Shaw earlier, she is now pursued by a lone engineer. When entering, she notices that the trilobite not only survived her decontamination procedure but had grown to a massive size. As the lone engineer marched on her position and moves to kill her, Shaw opens the medical bay door releasing the creature from its holding and it immediately moves to attack and subdue the engineer. Once restraining the limbs of the engineer, the trilobite ejects its long proboscis, ovipositor-like organ into the mouth of the engineer and down its throat, beginning the impregnation process, following the completion of which is lethal to the host. After a short period, the trilobite would remove itself from the engineer, slumping to the floor lifeless and having completed its life's task. Eventually, the lifeless engineer would begin to writhe on the floor as the razor-sharp head dome of the young protomorph creature within would burst through its chest cavity and force its body out of its deceased host. Records of this creature following its initial birth are absent from us at the project. One more outlandish rumor circulating the network speaks of a ship visiting the moon of LV-223 over a hundred years after the doomed Prometheus expedition did. This rumor talks about a massive biomass growth, something akin to a mountain that now surrounds and engulfs the Prometheus lifeboat, the last known location of the Deacon. Some have theorized that this biomass is in fact the Deacon creature, developed into some kind of living biological structure or hive of some kind. However, this is currently only speculation and has yet to be verified by any credible sources. The second known occurrence of the Protomorph, this variant catalogued as Proto-Xenomorph XX033D, was on the Erebos Plasma Station in the 26 Draconis system in the year 2185, studying the recently formed black hole in the system and its effects on the surrounding planet and wildlife. In the chaos of its formation, it ripped a nearby planet, LV-1113, apart. This had consequences that were yet to be fully understood by the researchers and inhabitants of the station. LV-1113 was home to an engineer installation, plentiful with the engineer's genetic accelerant. This supply had been modified by members of the USCSS Cronus crew nearly a century earlier into a potential vaccine against the development of neomorphic parasites within a human host. This was largely a failure, but the now coined 26 Draconis strain was left behind by these scientists. When the planet was ripped apart, the local extremophilic viruses were subjected to the 26 Draconis strain of the engineer's genetic accelerant and ejected out into the void as the black hole swallowed up the majority of the planet. This event left behind this new life form that shouldn't be able to exist, where life shouldn't be able to survive, and a mess of asteroids close by Erebos, categorized under the species name Luxaventum Hestalum. This new life form would form one of four subspecies that would come together to form the Proto-Xenomorph XX033D or Draconis variant of the species, and its life cycle's technical stage zero. The project covered the prior stages of the life cycle and its subspecies or colonial species components in our prior data log. So tune into that data log for more information on Luxaventum hestalen, Alvumventum eribos, and Heptopus tabularium as rehashing that information can make this data log quite long and convoluted. For all intents and purposes, the third stage of the XX033D's life cycle, Heptopus tabularium, also known as the trilobite, implants a host with the genetic materials of the protomorph's fourth stage plagiarist Noxipeta into a host organism, forcibly implanting them with the genetic material using its colossal biology. 
or more accurately, a long and thick fleshy proboscis. Once inside a host, this mutagenic substance begins a form of the DNA reflex process, bonding and splicing its own genetic code with that of its host and forming a tumour that quickly develops into an infantile protomorph. A gestating deacon cells rapidly consume organ, muscle, and bone mass directly from its host, killing the victim and leaving nothing more than an empty brittle bone shell of a corpse in its wake. After growing too large for its host's now deceased body, this protomorph, also known as the Ethon of the protomorph species, cuts its way out of its flesh prison using the sharpened point on the back of its domed head to bisect its host's body. During its birth, the deacon will slump out from its host on the ground with the amniotic feeding sac still attached to it, providing it with final nutrients as the creature stumbles about and begins to familiarize itself with its new habitat. After emerging and reaching a juvenile stage, it was seen to have shared a lot in common in terms of morphology and phenotype with the LV2. 2-3 protomorph variant. Despite being generated under wildly different circumstances and following a different genetic life cycle, this does create questions as to its feasibility being left to chance, leading many researchers here to think both creatures' similarities could not simply be molecular happenstance and possibly an indication of something more deeply rooted in the genetic makeup of the engineer's genetic accelerant. One notable difference with the Aribos born deacons is their size. These human spawn creatures appear noticeably smaller when compared to the engineer spawn creature from LV223 immediately after their birth, being only around half a meter tall. But they make up for this by rapidly tripling in size over the coming hours. While never seen, recorded or yet to be encountered, the Proto-Xenomorph XX033 and its Draconis variant is suggested to have a fifth stage to its life cycle. However, as discussed earlier in the datalog, there is basically no confirmed evidence on what this fifth stage could be. Could it be a large warrior class or queen type? Or perhaps it has something to do with the rumoured extensive biomass located on LV223. Until further studies are able to be conducted on this species, it's likely the answers will continue to elude us due to the limited times they have been encountered over the centuries. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, Jack Fleming Jr. and Scott Jardy, or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia and Vladimir Chernikov. But until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.